Welcome to my basics of painting corn blood reavers for Shadespire. So I've undercoated the models with a grey spray. Uh, I'm doing this because it's almost entirely going to be light colours with a little bit of metals. I'll be doing the trousers in black, I'll be doing the armour in red with uh, gold detailing around the edges. I'll be doing the boots in brown, I will be doing the metallics in steel. Uh, the inlay on the metallics in gold, this in brown, this in flesh, and then I'll start hitting things with ink washes. It's not going to be a particularly complicated paint scheme because large parts of the model are either flesh, black or red. These are the core colours for painting corn models. So I'm going to start with a little bit of thin down corn base and I'm just going to paint the insides of the armour with that. So as you can see it's a base colour, it covers nicely and there's not that much on this model that it needs to cover. It's only the three major armour pieces and the helmet. So very quickly it starts to take shape and then we have let's quickly do this inlay here and then the helmet which we will do this bit in red Here. and then the face we're going to do as a skull from this part onwards so I'm going to do it in red I may then go back over to block in the skull but that is the work of a couple of minutes so I'm going to leave this to dry and I'm going to come back and start applying the next colour. With the first coat dry, I'm now going to apply Talon Flesh, which I've thinned down a little, to probably quite a large part of the model. So you can see just how much of this model is flesh. And when I've finished applying flesh across the whole uh, warband. It will add quite a bit of definition as opposed to them just being all grey. So this may require two thin coats. I'm fully prepared to do that. And I've got a nice number two Windsor & Newton Series 7 brush which I'm using to apply the paint. So I will come back in a minute, having applied a second thin coat, to even this up, and with it dry. So now I'm going to apply black to the trousers. So this again covers up quite a large portion of the model. Filling in even more, leaving just the metal, the leather, and the details to go. So I'll come back in a minute, having put, finished putting the black on. With the black done and dry, we're now going to add some XV88 to the leather parts. So, in this case, the wrappings on the weapon like so this bag here like so And 
we're going to come on with a different brown to do the belt and then another colour to do the cloth piece but we use this colour to pick out any stitching as well when we're close to finishing the model so I'll let that dry and I will come back in a minute to do the rest of the leather so with the XV88 dry the next colour I'm going to add is what used to be the old Setdale Foundation Caltham Brown but I'm going to use this for the belt and the leather attaching the shin guards so this will take a minute to do I'll be back in a minute ready to start doing the metals so with the two different colours of leather dry it's time to start hitting the model with some metallics in this case I'm using Vallejo Model Air Steel and I'm filling in the bits that I'm going to do in metal. So in the case of Sake, it's going to be the chainmail and the axe. I'll be doing in gold around the armour, the belt buckle, the icon at the end of the chain and the inlay that goes around the axe. So I'll be back in a minute with that done. At this point we're quite close to finishing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put gold on the trim of the axe. Making sure to get the stylized corn symbol. As you can see, more than one coat might be necessary. Gold for the corn symbol on the chain here. Gold for the belt buckle. gold on the trim around the legs around this leg armor here so I'll be back in a second with that done and some final touch-ups before I do things like the skull and then hit it with an ink wash and now I'll apply the last base coat which is going to be the skull portion of Sake's mask with that done the model will be ready for me to apply an ink wash in order to add some definition and have the model ready for the tournament I'm playing in tomorrow. So I'll be back to hit the whole thing with an Agrax Earthshade wash in a second. With all the base coats done, what I'm going to do now is start to ink the model. So a nice heavy coat of ink and then pulling it away from pooling towards the extremities and other parts of the model I'm going to continue and do this for the entire model so already you can see it's starting to come together see that it's going all over including on the armor plates including on the helmet including the hands and the axe because what we want is a good strong coat of ink that adds a great deal of depth to the model so that's the base coats and the first ink wash. I may come back later with a more advanced video. If you've liked this, hit like or subscribe.